And we're back for another Pico CTF challenge. This time we're looking at flag shop. And the description is, there's a flag shop selling stuff. Can you buy a flag? We get a source file. We will grab and throw into VS Code. Connect with Netcat and then the URL and the port. And our hint is two's complement can do really weird things when numbers get big. First off, let's try that netcat and let's connect to it and see what it gives us. And then after that, let's take a look at the source code. Welcome to the flag exchange. We sell flags and then I'm given three options and I'm supposed to select one. So let's start by checking my account balance by putting in a one. I have a balance of 110 and then I'm presented with the menu again. I'll make this a little larger. I'm going to buy a flag and see what there is currently for sale. I have two options, definitely not the flag, flag, and leet flag. So let's try definitely not the flag, flag. These knockoff flags cost 900 each and are desired quantity. So I can buy up to one of these since I have 1100. So let's go ahead and let's buy one of them. Let's check my account balance, it's 200. Okay, that makes sense. Let's go back. Let's try to buy the leap flag. Leap flags cost, looks like $100,000 and we only have one in stock. Well, let's try to buy one and let's see what it does. Not enough funds for the transaction. Okay, let's try buying another flag now. So we have $200 left. Let's try to buy one more flag. Not enough funds. Let's see what exit does. Okay, that just seems to kill everything. Perfect, let's look at the code. First, we start in the main method. We see the printout of the menu right here. It's in a while loop. That's why we get that behavior where the menu is always presented. The account balance is right there. Here we take our input to get our menu choice, which is being stored in menu. And we can see if it's equal to one, then we print the account balance. If it's equal to two, we go into this code and this is the printing of our next menu followed by a scan to grab our choice. If our choice is number one, the knockoff flags, we're again presented with an option and we're asked how many we want and we get that in number of flags. If the number of flags is greater than zero, we do a quick check. So the total cost is gonna be the cost of each flag times the number of flags. Gives us the total cost. And then we see if that is less than or equal to our account balance. And if it is, then we subtract the total cost from the account balance to arrive at our new account balance. And if we can't pay for it, then it tells us we don't have enough funds. I'm gonna eliminate some of these extra spaces just to make this a little more convenient to look at. And then if our choice was the leap flag, again, we're prompted for input. If we say we wanna buy one, we check our account balance, look at if it's greater than 100,000, and if so, we seem to open a flag.txt and we print out that flag. So our goal here is to end up with greater than $100,000. And the way that we're gonna do that is we are going to exploit an overflow that occurs in the total cost calculation. And it'll be helpful to talk a, a little bit more before we do this about what exactly we're doing. So I've quickly prepared a little slide deck over here to tell you what we're gonna be doing. It's important to remember everything in a computer is just binary that we interpret in a specific context. As an example, how should we represent numbers? One of the important things to ask would be, well, what range of numbers do we expect? So something like from zero to three, meaning zero, one, two, three, you could represent with two bits. If you had a larger, range up to 900 
whatever, uh, one under 100,000. You would need 20 bits. If you wanted to include negatives, now you're looking at negative one, zero, one. So three values. Again, you would need two bits. So we create data types based on our expected usage. And we expect or hope that these chunks of memory will be used in the way we intend, but not necessarily. As an example down here, the blue class, let's say these are integers, are four bytes, uh, eight bytes, let's call green the longs, meaning a long integer, and then we have a purple class. But I just want to point out, there's nothing preventing someone, some program or some operation from using, say, half of a long in an arbitrary fashion, or using an integer as, say, ASCII text. So let's, let's talk about our specific problem. We have a signed int, and we want to think about this. So a signed int is 32 bits, which is a fairly huge space, and it gets to be difficult to talk about. So instead, we're going to talk about a 3-bit signed integer. And I want you to consider this as a box where you have three spots to fill. You have these three positions. You can only put a 0 or 1, and that gives you eight possibilities. And since we're interested in doing a signed integer, that means we have to somehow account for negative numbers. And two's complement, you'll notice it uses the most significant bit. So leftmost bit indicates whether something is positive or negative. So all these positive numbers, they all have a zero to start and all the negative numbers have a one to start. And uh, there's a good reason for that. Two's complement is very helpful and easy to implement in hardware, you could definitely have done something different. Say, for example, you could have made this the bottom end of your range and then just count it up and said, in this range of our eight possible values, we start at negative four, that is zero, zero, zero. Our zero, zero, one is negative three and just count your way up. Uh, it's all based off your conventions. Hopefully I didn't confuse you. Uh, this will all make sense very shortly. So overflow is an important thing to think about. We have a, three spots that we can fill, as we just discussed. Some operations will return large results, which makes sense for things like multiplication, for example, which is why multiplication normally in a, a real computer returns something like 64 bits if your integer size is 32, because you're probably going to have two integers being multiplied by each other and those are likely to be much more than a single integer can hold. So we've got too much stuff in a given type, potentially, to be assigned back into the smaller box. So if we were to take something that's too big, what happens? And here we have some examples. So again, remember, we're dealing with this simple case of just three bits. So we've got three spots we're going to fill, and we are going to run some code. Here we have x equals, and then we have a multiplication that happens of three times one. Three times one is three, which you can represent in binary as zero, one, one. And that fits in perfectly to an integer. As we can see over here, zero, one, one works out to a decimal value of three when we assign these bits in this scheme. Let's think though about something that goes outside the ranges. We, we can't represent four, which is what we're getting here. Four times one is a decimal value of four. And we look in our scheme and we see we top out at three. So what happens now? Well, the binary value that we have four in an unsigned fashion is represented as one zero zero. So just as a quick reminder, this is the ones place. Then we have the twos place. Then we have the fours place in just normal binary counting. So this is four. So if we assign four, but we're using the convention of twos complement, this has a value of negative four. And this is, this is very important because we took something that was positive and we changed it to a negative. Let's do a few more. So this, this fit in nicely, but now we have three times 12, which is 36, which is much larger than the box we had. The box we have is only for three digits. So what do we do? Well, we chop off everything except the last three and we put it into our box 
and we already know what that is. One zero zero is negative four. So that's very interesting. All of a sudden we have 36 from this multiplication is the same as four because we've exceeded our bounds. And let's do one more just to show you it doesn't always have to be negative. Three times 11 is 33, which gives us this binary string of numbers. And when we go to put it in our box, our much smaller three bit signed integer box, we can only take those last three digits and that works out to be one. As you can see, we put those three digits in and we look at what that is in our scheme that we're using and it's a one. Okay, so again, not 33, but positive. So we can get positives or negatives by overflowing these values. So switching signs can be abused. As a quick example, it's much nicer to have a negative number subtracted from your bank account than a positive number. And just to quickly explain that, let's say I have $700 currently in my account and I want to write a check. If I wrote a normal check, say it would be 700 minus $125, $135. Okay, that works out to uh, whatever that is. Let's make the math easier on myself, $550. But if we were to subtract a negative, then all of a sudden it's the same as addition. So minus, minus 150 means all of a sudden by writing a negative check, sorry, this is interpreting it differently, appropriately enough for this video. This is making the two dashes a, a single long dash, but this is actually adding. So that would be really nice if somehow we could get additional money added into the system just by writing ourselves checks and it just came out of nowhere. So let's go back to our problem and let's talk about what we can do here. So we know that given these, these flags, there's a way that we can add to our total account balance. And let's figure out exactly how by seeing what the int limits are for 32-bit int in C. We can see it's from negative 2 billion and change to positive 2 billion and change. So what we would like to do is we would like to slightly overflow so that this becomes negative. Again, remember, once we get to the top end of what we can represent in uh, two's complement, then the very next number in binary counting is a negative. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that top end number, positive number, and we're gonna divide by 900, which is our price per flag, to figure out how many flags do we need to ask for to make this become a negative number so that our bank account goes up. And the answer is uh, just a little bit under uh, 200 and whatever, 93, the number that ends in 93. So let's just take this and we'll just be very safe with this and we'll make it 192. So well over what we need. We'll go into our flag netcat session. We will buy flags. We'll buy the definitely not a flag flag. It costs 900 each. How many do we want? Well, we want to overflow. And okay, I was worried. It seemed like it was going to hang, but it didn't. So the final cost is again, it's a negative number, a very large negative number. And so we can see our current balance after the transaction became this very large positive number. So now that we have all this money, and I'll just verify it once more by checking my account balance, we have more than enough to buy our flag. And I will grab that by hitting two. And I want one super flag, and we can see we get the flag right here. Just to reinforce this, because I know some of this may have been a little sloppy, I'd like to just quickly walk you through an example I was setting up over here. This is a very nice website where you can run C code. So C normally involves a little more setup than maybe most people would like. So it's really nice to be able to run in the browser like this without doing your own setup. And I'd like us to consider a few options as I debug through this.
oops, uh, sorry, just one second, had a little compilation error there. So first off, you'll see we're getting a lot of overflow warnings, but these are just warnings. You know, if nobody's looking, if no one's checking, then who cares? We can exploit this. So what we're gonna do is I've set a breakpoint here. I'm going to begin the run of the program and we're gonna look at the values that appear over here. Right now they're garbage values because they're unallocated memory positions. But as we go through, I'd like you to watch how this signed integer is handled. And this is us moving out of that simple three bit case to look at these huge numbers that occur. So I'm going to step over this code and you're gonna see the simple positive, that makes sense. It's 123 and we see 123 over here. The simple negative, that's also within the range, that negative 2 billion to 2 billion uh, range that we talked about, so that should be fine. And we can see it is, that is represented properly. Now we have this number that's way bigger than 2 billion, but it's going to be positive. And the reason it's gonna be positive is when we grab this and we look at it in the calculator, you're gonna see that the decimal representation of the lower bits ends in a zero, or, or begins in a zero, excuse me. So you can see we have all these ones starting way high up because it's a large number, but we're going into this much smaller box. This bottom row is the much smaller box we're going into. So it's gonna cut off this entire top row and it's going to just go based off this. And this starts with a zero, so this should be a positive number. So we will step over that and we can see it is in fact a positive number. Now this number is just slightly over the two billion limit and if we were to plug it into the calculator, we would see lower 32 bits begin with a one, so it will be negative. And then we have uh, a multiplication, which was the specific instance that we ran into when we were doing the flag and we're taking a huge number and we're multiplying. And what I'm hoping to show you with this is just that we are in fact doing a conversion between types that's implicit in this multiplication. And what this actually is, is it's an unsigned long that this number is too large even to go into the unsigned long, you're gonna see. So we have huge number, we wrote this down, but that was too big even for an unsigned longs box. So it threw away a bunch of things that were too big for it and it came to this value. And now we're going to do an assignment where we take the huge number and we try to put it in an even smaller box, this reassigned box. We'll do that now. And the thing to note is the multiplication result and the reassigned value are the exact same. That just tells you that multiplication is producing an unsigned long. And a long is eight bytes in C, an int, a signed int is four bytes, and that explains the behavior that we're seeing. Anyway, long video, hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, please like, subscribe, leave a comment. Thanks, have a good day.